Last year, Nissan's debt was downgraded to junk. It was the only legacy automaker with its debt downgraded to junk status. That means that when Nissan goes to get loans uh, to borrow money, which they have to do, this is what car companies do, then they have to pay a higher interest rate than their competition. Nissan have just revealed, uh, they've just revealed their sales over the past 12 months. Now, the global media are somehow reporting this like this is some sort of success, like it's a win. But Nissan forecast that they would sell 5.4 million cars over the past 12 months. Um, they missed that number by 2 million. So let's imagine Tesla did this. Tesla went and gave a forecast and they were, out, they were off by 2 million. Um, would the global media report that like it was some kind of success? I'd say probably not. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. It's great. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Nissan, they have revealed what they've been up to, why, why they've made these big claims, and um, what they're planning to do about it. They have what they call a recovery plan. Nissan CEO Makoto Ukida grades himself a solid B on Nissan's just finished recovery recovery plan. Now, speaking of his recovery plan, apparently the recovery plan actually came from his wife. His wife said to him, um, you know, you're getting old, you're kind of doing the same thing, um, you're very stuck in your ways, It's you've got to change, the world's changing. And he went, oh, okay, yeah, good point. Let's come up with a recovery plan. Now, that's the story he told, by the way. The chief executive concedes he doesn't deserve an A for missing volume targets. Moving more metal to customers worldwide, especially in the crucial United States market, will be a top priority for Nissan and its CEO, Ukida, as he shifts Nissan Motor Company into its next midterm business blueprint. Whatever that means, he said it, I didn't. Ukita wrapped up his first midterm plan with a mixed report card that was finalized on Thursday, as Japan's number three car maker reported financial results for the fiscal year ended March 31. Nissan missed its global sales target by massive gap, by 2 million, and its profit margin goal. The company fell short to varying degrees on other objectives such as electrification and capacity utilization. Now in the fourth quarter, as in the, the quarter just gone for Nissan, the Nissan year works differently the way they report on sales. So the, the quarter just gone, Nissan's revenue was about 30% below analyst expectations, but for the entire year it was up. And the key reason is because of deflation of the yen. There are still challenges. Volume increase is the biggest challenge, said Ukida, of Nissan's performance at a news conference. This is the most important thing. Now, here's where Nissan's strategy uh, looks like it's going to be a complete failure to me, just logically, mathematically. I, I don't see how this strategy would work. And guys, if you believe it will work, um, email me, contact at theelectricviking.com because I don't see how this is mathematically possible. I mean, Nissan, I don't see how they can save their own bacon here. Ukita unveiled the plan, Nissan Next, in May 2020. He targeted operating profit margin of 5%, and global sales of around 5.4 million vehicles at the March 31 finish line. So March 31 that just passed. Now, obviously, Nissan sales, global sales slumped to 3.4 million. So they, they missed their goal by 2 million vehicles. This was down significantly from the 4.9 million Nissan was selling at the start of the plan. In other words, a few years ago, Nissan sold 4.9 million. They said, oh, we can do better. We can get to 5.1 million. Instead of that happening, they went down to 3.4. Now, that's a massive drop. I mean, it's like a 50% drop in sales. Now, what's, what shocks me is the fact that Tesla sales in the first quarter of this year versus their first quarter of last year were down, what, like 15%, something like that? Now, imagine if Tesla sales were down 50%. You, you wouldn't be able to read any newspaper anywhere without it being on every page of that paper, right? I mean, I'm exaggerating to some degree, but maybe I'm not exaggerating, actually. No, probably not. But Nissan missing by 2 million. I don't think anyone's going to even report on this. I Googled this, guys. There wasn't a single article from anyone except Automotive News. None. There's nothing from Reuters. Reuters couldn't care less. Reuters is only interested in Tesla. Anyway, 
In the just finished fiscal year, Ukita managed to lift Nissan's operating profit margin to 4.5%. Now, operating profit margin of 4.5% to me sounds exceptionally low. I don't see how that's a possibly considered a win. Anyhow, at least it reversed the loss Nissan started with, says Automotive News. But Nissan's plan to get itself out of this massive decline in sales that just continues year after year doesn't make any sense to me. I, I can't understand how the company thinks this is actually going to work. Ukita says he wants a 7.5% sales increase to 3.7 million vehicles next year in 2025. Um, well, between now and March 31 of 2025. North America, he said, will be a key engine for that growth, fueling the upswing with a will be a slew of updated product, including a redesigned Kicks crossover, uh, an Amada and Infiniti QX80 SUVs, and a next generation Murano crossover. Now, guys, do you care about any of those cars? I mean, I personally, I, I'm actually interested in internal combustion cars. I always have been. But none of those cars, in my opinion, even rank on any kind of interest level whatsoever, not even one out of a thousand. Anyhow, Nissan say they will tap growing demand in the affordable segments by dialing up output of the subcompact Versa from Mexico and the compact Sentra in North America will climb by 13%, they say, to 1.4 million vehicles this fiscal year. This will solidify its role as Nissan's biggest market as deliveries in China continue to fall. Now, deliveries in China, here's the thing. Nissan is saying their recovery plan will include the fact that they're going to grow their sales in China. But no one, not even the most bullish Nissan fan, would seriously believe Nissan would grow their sales in China over the next 12 months. That's just like pure pure Disney fantasy. It's, it's not even Disney fantasy. That's beyond the realm of Disney fantasy. It's just like... Um, maybe maybe Disney fantasy on acid, you know, craziness. I mean, Nissan sales in China have been going down just relentlessly. And somehow Nissan's going to um, counteract that with what exactly? The Nissan Sylphie. The Nissan Sylphie, by the way, now is, is better than the previous version. It's now a hybrid. It's still a sedan. It's still old technology. And still sales continue to fall. Now, the Nissan Sylphie, I mentioned that because Nissan used to sell a million of those a year in China. And it used to be the best-selling car in China. Well, Nissan did what they did with the Leaf. Nothing. They just basically didn't change much. In the, in the just-finished fiscal year, North American sales for Nissan increased by 23% to 1.3 million. That's pretty good growth, but Nissan seemed pretty bullish to believe they're going to continue to grow those sales significantly without any real significant vehicles to do it with in North America. In Europe, Nissan is chasing a 6.5% sales increase to 385,000 vehicles. I don't know exactly how they're going to do that in Europe either. I mean, what EVs do Nissan have? Yeah, okay, EV sales growth has slowed in Europe, but it's still growing and it's still important. Uh, Nissan isn't really interested, though, in that area. I mean, yeah, they have the Aria, but Nissan doesn't make many Arias and it doesn't sell many. Now, Nissan say that they will increase their their sales in China by 1% over the next 12 months. But they don't say how they're going to do that. And considering Nissan sales in China have fallen by around 50% over the last few years, that just seems incredibly unlikely to me. Now, Nissan's key part of its plan is this. It's going to deploy solid state batteries and slash the cost of next generation battery EVs by 30%. Really, yeah, I mean, really, Nissan's going to save its bacon with solid state batteries and slashing the cost of battery EVs by 30%. Now, solid state batteries, that's very unlikely that's going to pan out for Nissan, obviously. Uh, so let's just move on from that. But slashing battery costs by 30%, that would make them, what, uh, maybe 10% more expensive, 20% more expensive to build than Chinese EVs are today. Now, Nissan say they're going to slash costs of their EVs by 30% by 2030. Um, How exactly does that help them compete over the next three years? I don't know exactly. I really don't understand Nissan's plan there. And I really can't see how Nissan is going to save its bacon in China. And that represents, I mean, what, 40%, 30%, 40%, 30%, 40%, 30%, 40%, 30%, 40%, 30%, 40%, 30%, 40%, 30%, 40%, 30%, 40%, 30%, 40%, 30%, 40%, 30%, 
35% of Nissan sales yearly, those sales will continue to fall. And Nissan, well, they still have a fair bit of debt. Their debt is rated at junk. My question is this, if their sales continue to fall, which is very, very likely, how will they continue to repay their existing debt? In my opinion, this company is basically like Kodak. They were great. Kodak were great. Nissan used to be great. I, I, I loved a lot of their cars. The Nissan 200SX, yeah, back in the day, that was a pretty cool car, right? I, I don't know why, but I, that really appealed to me. Nissan doesn't have anything appealing anymore. And its plan, it's not really even a plan. Solid state batteries, I mean, come on. Thanks for watching.